Hello there. Welcome to the weekly web news roundup with our pick of the stories making the online headlines. Coming up on this week's show, Li-Fi technology is expanding fast. An insight. The biggest stories from the past seven days. And the video of the week. In Paris, a major leather goods brand has just opened a next-generation connected retail outlet. It's a world first. Shoppers can browse the aisles with their tablet computer or smartphone and will come across one of these yellow markers. The machines in question send information in real time thanks to innovative technology known as Li-Fi. The Li-Fi terminals communicate with the light, which sends information to the tablet computer, as you can see. So you have content which is sent via the light. Some videos outline our brand and our history. Others explain recent trends to customers who are perhaps less in tune with current fashions. As we move from one terminal to another, over there, for example, we arrive in the bridal area, so I'm able to see new content regarding our bridal collection. At each terminal, customers will discover new content delivered by light from LEDs located on the ceiling. It's no more than a simple Wi-Fi connection, but one which is ten times more powerful than Wi-Fi. The fruit of several years of research, this technology is now in perfect running order and is set to become omnipresent in our daily lives. Only a handful of companies are currently developing Li-Fi around the world. In France, Cédric Mayer's company is the first to industrialize the LED internet connection. We use LEDs because they're semiconductors, they're small opto-electronic components to keep things simple, which allow you to send zeros and ones via switching known as opti. So I turn off, I turn on. I make a zero and a one, all at a very high frequency. Li-Fi works with any type of LED and requires an Ethernet network. As you can see, my light's connected to my network. It will connect with my small receiver, which is connected via USB. The idea is to use Li-Fi with spotlights installed in the ceiling to limit cabling. Furthermore, unlike Wi-Fi, 3G and Bluetooth, Li-Fi doesn't use radio waves but simply the light spectrum, which is less harmful for health, allowing for multiple applications for wireless internet. Today it's used in various domains, such as in hospitals, to connect nurses to the hospital network, in warehouses to pinpoint pallets, or in shops to do what we call geo-marketing. But it's also used in public buildings, such as in schools. And Li-Fi boasts many other advantages. On one hand, you have a secure network, as light doesn't pass through walls, so you can surf the internet in total peace of mind. On the other hand, you have bandwidth, so several people can surf using the same light without having a broken signal, as is the case with Wi-Fi. When there are too many people, you can no longer connect. Today, we're only witnessing the beginnings of this technology, as was the case for Wi-Fi 10 years ago. Cedric Meyer's company has so far developed a few tablet computer prototypes offering Li-Fi, as well as this small module, which can be plugged into the headphone jack on your smartphone to connect to the internet via the light. But the giants of lighting and IT constructors are set to generalize the system. The next step is, in fact, this small key. It will no longer be found here, but instead natively integrated inside my computer or in your smartphone. And each lamp will feature a tiny chip, something which is currently in the pipeline. More eco-friendly and more economical, as LEDs consume much less electricity than Wi-Fi routers, Li-Fi is soon to become the next internet revolution. Uprooted trees, roofs ripped off houses, storefronts torn apart and streets littered with all kinds of rubbish and waste. These images have been doing the rounds online and bear witness to the ferocity of Cyclone Pam that stole through the archipelago of Vanuatu over the weekend. Web users the world over have been doing what they can to help the people of the South Pacific Island. Many have taken to social networks to show support with those affected by the devastating cyclone. 
They've been posting under the Pray for the Pacific and Pray for Vanuatu hashtags with messages of solidarity for the people of Vanuatu and urging the international community to provide urgent relief for the thousands on the island nation who desperately need help. A number of NGOs are relaying the same message and have launched online fundraising appeals to bring aid to those who have lost everything to Cyclone Pam. The Red Cross, for example, and also Care and Oxfam are asking people to make donations via their respective websites. The money raised will be used to buy basic essentials for victims as they struggle to get back on their feet. On Wednesday, the 18th of March, the European Central Bank inaugurated its new headquarters in Frankfurt, Germany. On the occasion of the event, thousands of activists from around Europe descended on the city streets to protest against the austerity policies imposed by European governments. The demonstrations quickly turned into scuffles between protesters and police. Despite the heavy police presence, violent clashes quickly broke out close to the ECB headquarters. The incidents in question can be seen in these amateur videos available online, in which we make out protesters damaging street furniture, shop windows and even police cars. In response to these riots, the police swiftly went into action, deploying water cannons and other methods to disperse protesters. Frankfurt police also announced on its Twitter accounts having arrested several hundred people involved in the violent attacks in the city. German police believe that the troublemakers are members of the Black Bloc, an anarchist movement known for its violent acts targeting symbols of capitalist society. An emotional wave has gripped the web in the wake of the deadly attack carried out on Wednesday the 18th of March at the Bardo Museum in Tunis. The bloody event was swiftly condemned by many political leaders around the world, including French Prime Minister Manuel Valls, his Canadian and Japanese counterparts, and the American Secretary of State John Kerry, who all used Twitter to express support for the Tunisian people. Thousands of anonymous net users have also participated in this show of solidarity with Tunisia and its inhabitants. Social network users from around the world have used the keywords hashtag Je suis Tunisienne or hashtag I am Tunisian to demonstrate their indignation in the face of Wednesday's attacks, as well as to extend sympathy to the families and friends of the attack's victims. But while the mood is mainly one of contemplation online, some web users are asserting, signs held aloft, that they will be choosing Tunisia for their summer holidays this year. The aim being to ensure the tourist industry, which is of major economic importance to the country, is not affected by Wednesday's attacks in Tunis. This YouTube video was made by the team from the Stunt Freaks Collective and sees one daredevil paragliding with his snowmobile over a mountain in Sweden. And it makes for thrilling viewing indeed. Enjoy. Enjoy.